Turn with me this morning to the book of Daniel. Daniel and chapter number 3. Daniel chapter number 3. Man, that's your name, isn't it, Daniel? And a good book named after you. You're yeah, right. a good book, I should say. Alright. Okay, alright. Well, I believe that name Daniel. A good men have that name, so you're a good man, Daniel. <laughs> Once again, we appreciate everyone being here. Good to see Jackie back with us. Good to have Don back with us and everyone this morning. Amen. We're glad that you're here. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to, just for a few moments, uh, look at the thought of, I will not bow. And uh, you know that the world is full of folks who are in, in abundance, who have bowed to the music of this world. And the world's full of folks who have bowed to the music of this world. And uh, they have bowed actually even to things that are more disgraceful than music. And uh, they have, in every generation, uh, we find that uh, though there are men who have not bowed to the music of this world, men and women, I should uh, conjugate that together, men and women who have not bowed to the music of this world, and uh, they have refused to bow to the things of the generation, to the world, to the enemy. And they realize that there is one that they need to bow their life and their soul to. And uh, they realize that there is only one who can save their soul. Amen. There is a generation uh, that uh, have bowed to the, the, the gods of this world, but thank God for the men and women who realize that they need to bow to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and they're not being afraid of being put to death by men, but they're fearful and uh, of one thing that is greater, and that is eternal separation from God. Brother Dennis, let us sing that song, What a Day That Will Be. Do you know what, Sister Jan? It's too great of a day for me to tinker around with things in this world. I must realize that I cannot bow to anything else, but I need God. And I need to keep my mind made up, and I need to keep my pos position firm, that I am going to serve God as well as for you as well. So I want to look at these Bible heroes that you are so familiar with, probably every one of you, but I want to look at some good things and hopefully fresh things and new things for you, for you from the Word of God that these men, uh, Bible heroes, that said, I will not bow. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 3, I'm going to read verse number 4 through 7. The Word of God says, Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, cypher, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth uh, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, and psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. I just for a moment want to look at these few verses, and then we will uh, continue on down to the chapter and look. But I find that here the very first thing is we find that there is a world that is bowing. And here they are, Nebuchadnezzar has set the golden image up in the plain of door. The music begins to play. His commandment is, is that all will bow down to the golden image or else they will have the ultimate alternative of being cast into the furnace. There they will lose their life. And uh, I find that in this generation, there is a king who has set up uh, this golden image wanting folks to bow and uh, recant and not live for God. But I want to tell you that in every generation, 
There is the same, uh, uh, there is the same uh, trickery of the enemy. There is the same call of the world. There is the same devil that wants to get men and women to bow to anything but to God Almighty, the creator of this universe, the lover of mankind's soul. The enemy is working hard to try to get men and women to bow. And here they were, once they bowed, they were lost. They were lost. Uh, there was that, uh, that, that position that, that they had bowed to the things of the world and they had not worshipped the God of this universe, the creator of their soul, the only God who is able to save them, deliver them, and help them. And here they are, they're being tested. Now people in our modern time but are not tested the same way in which Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and all of those who were uh, at the sound of the music was tested. We find that uh, really in, in these modern times, you may not have to face death at, as these were uh, willing to do so. Your family a member, you may not be drugged throughout the street until you die, or you may not be thrown into a den of lions. You may not be drawn, thrown into a fiery furnace. You may not be crucified as Jesus. You may not be boiled in oil as John or beheaded like James. But I want you to know that just because we live in a Western world that seems civilized, we do, that the enemy is still trying to get folks to bow. It doesn't stop them. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are saved, there is a challenge that the enemy is going to place upon your life in that he is going to try to get you to bow down to the things of this world. He is going to try to get you to bend a knee and he will have a way of getting people to get you to bow down. That's exactly what Nebuchadnezzar was. He was an instrument in the hand of the enemy or Satan, the devil, however you want to call it. He was an instrument in which he had created this, this humongous golden image. He had created a band that was playing music. He had created that they would go into a fiery furnace if they didn't bow down. But in the day and hour in which we live, the enemy may have those who will mock you in this day and hour of popular and tell you that serving God and living a sanctified life, amen, uh, you, you might as well give up. You might as well bow down because they're going to mock you. There's those who are going to criticize you for what you believe and there's going to be those people that, that are going to tell you that all you have to do is love God to be saved. Can I stay here for a moment? That all you have to do is love God to be saved. There are many folks who believe in God. Yeah. Believing in God will not get you to heaven. And you may say, but I love God. Loving God alone will not get you to heaven. You see, there are rules that, 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 that are enforced uh, by, by, by mankind in this world. And there are rules that are enforced by God if we're going to make heaven our home. Romans says... For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that He is God. Amen. Jesus said that if you love me, you will keep my commands. It's not just enough this morning to love God. You must keep His commandments. There's a lot of churches that will say, if you love God, you're alright. That's a lie from the pit of hell. They're getting you to bow down from what God wants. Amen. But there is coming a day where every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to confess that He is King of kings and He is Lord of lords. Everyone is going to give an account of himself before God. And for those who refuse to keep the commandments of God, they will give an account before God because they bow down to the God of this world. Yeah. I'm preaching a message this morning that's important. If we are going to serve God, we cannot just bow down to say, well, I love Him or I believe in Him. We must pursue an experience that although we're criticized and although we're misjudged, 
that we know that we must live a life where we obey the commandments of God because we need to make heaven our home. I will not bow down. Let's read verse number 10 and 11. The Bible says, Thou, O King, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psalter, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, he shall be cast into the midst of a burning furnace. See, the majority of the modern world, they don't have a fear for God. They don't have a reverence for God because they've never seen Him. They've said, well, we've not seen God. I can see King Nebuchadnezzar. I know that He is the King. and He has money. He has wealth. He has authority. I can see Him, so I'll bow down before Him. We live in a world of no fear where folks don't even fear God. Well, I can't see Him. How can I fear Him? Brother and sister, it is about knowing about Him through the Word of God that although we don't see Him, Amen. We feel Him. And we know Him. And we reverence Him because He is God Almighty. The world says, well, how can you worship someone who you can't see? Well, how can you breathe air that you can't see? I'm telling you, I know that God is there. The Creator of this universe. I know what He's done in my life. Just because I can't see Him, Amen, doesn't mean I bow down to the music of this world. Amen. Amen. I love God. Amen. Here were the three Hebrew children. They knew that the God that they could serve could del deliver them from a, a, a horrible death. And I'm sure that that day, I want to be very candid with you. If you were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and you were facing the fiery furnace, and we have faith that God can deliver us, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, but there was also the window of opportunity that they may not be delivered. Their word says that. We don't know. And so in their mind, they were thinking, we could die a horrible death to be burned to death. I don't know about you folks, but I think one of the worst ways that, uh, in my mind, I think is, is to be burned to death must be a terrible death. And so they're, they're looking at facing this. And, but they thought of how good God was to them. You see, He was more powerful in their life. And they had more love and respect for God than they had for the desire of being spared from, from this fiery furnace. There are going to be times in our life we will face criticism for serving God. You will. You'll face it from your family. There'll be some family members that does not understand your commitment to God, your love, your devotion. They, they won't, but you know what? I will not bow. There'll be some co-workers that they won't understand. There'll be community that don't understand why we are committed to God. Well, isn't it enough just to know Him? You don't have to go to church. I, I love God and I have church right here in my own home. The Word of God says, says forsake not the assembling of yourself together. The Word of God says that when we come together, we're unified and we provoke one another to love and to good works. Amen. We need to be together because we're commanded from God's Word. And so the king questioned them about their God. And listen to what the accusers uh, uh, told the king in verse number 12 through 14. They said, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy God, gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do ye not serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Did you notice that the king gives them a choice here? Here's a choice. And he says, Now, in verse number 15, if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. 
And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? People all over the world bow to the commandments of others. They bow to the world. They bow to the criticism of others. They bow to every ungodly God that Satan has created. But I like the answer that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego gives in verse number 16 through verse number 18 and on. I'm reading several scriptures this morning. But the Word of God says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What a powerful dedication. What a powerful testimony of these three Hebrew men as they said, we will not bow. Amen. Uh, you, listen, young people, when your classmates criticize you, don't bow. And uh, when uh, folks, your employers criticize you, don't bow. And uh, when your teachers don't understand, uh, don't bow. And, 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 and uh, when they say, don't dedicate your life to Jesus Christ, don't bow. When they threaten you, don't bow. And when, when you may even lose your position, don't bow. And when Satan says to you, why don't you just let worldliness come in? Why don't you just live a life that's a little loose and less faithful? I want to tell you something. Do not bow. There will always be those moments in the life of every Christian when you will be given the choice of bowing. The enemy wants you to compromise. The enemy wants you to feel like you are the minority. The enemy wants you to feel like danger awaits you if you do not bow. But I want to tell you something. That God is able to deliver you. God is able to keep you. We serve a God who is greater than any force in this world. Greater than any criticism. Greater than, than any test that we could go through. Do not bow. Do not bow this morning. There are so many that their compromise has bowed. God is looking for men and women who will have a made up mind and have a made up heart and have such a relationship with Him that will say, I will not bow. When temptation comes, I will not let into temptation because my relationship with God is the most important thing in my life. The greatest thing, Sister Tina, I can only imagine that as you were talking about that gentleman in his poverty, though he had very little, it appears to me that he had what he needed most, and that was a relationship with God. And I want to tell you that I'm sure that man could have bowed down and said, I, I won't say anything, but he stood up for what was right. Because, and, he, and you know what, Sister Tina, he'll probably face criticism and probably has before, but I want to tell you it's not worth bowing. And for you as a believer, no matter where you are, in your life, it's not worth bowing. It's not worth bowing for any position. It's not worth bowing for any financial gain. It's not worth bowing for any relationship. It's not worth bowing for any appeasing of your flesh. God is looking for men and women who will have such a relationship with Him that all of the world and their popularity and their ideas and their gods, you'll say, I will not bow. The king gave them the opportunity. But they said this, the day we bow is the day that we become losers. Do you know when you bow, you become a loser. You lose everything. Jesus said, what profit of man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? There is nothing this morning that's any greater than having a relationship with God. You and God. You allowing God to speak to you. You allowing God to write His commandments upon your heart. You allowing the Spirit of God to infiltrate you in your life. There is nothing greater. Uh, th there's, there, there's, there's nothing this morning that's worth bowing to. But I will stand for God. No matter what the loss is, I will stand. 
I think about men and women through the ages who have stood. I look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I look at Daniel. I look at Queen Esther. I look at I look at even you know, in the modern day as we look at, at men and women, darling Nibel Rose, who became a missionary to uh, to to, to the, uh, uh, I think it was Ganda. And there she was. Uh, her husband died, and she was left alone. I look at at, at men and women in modern day who said, "I will not bow." They had opportunity for things, but God moved in their life. There are many who have already entered in and seen that God delivered them and God helped them and now they're in their haven of rest with God because they did not die. In Daniel 3, 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of pure in the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times hotter Seven times more than it was was what to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to cast them into the burning fire furnace. Listen, Satan never gives up. And he never will win against the person that will say, I will not. He'll never give up. But he'll never win against the person that will say, I will not bow. In verse number 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the, uh, of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished the Bible says, and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt in the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I want you to know that your peers may think they, they have won when they've made the fire hot for you. And, and those people who want relationship with you may think that they have won when they've made the fire hot for you. And, and community and family, whoever it may be, they may think that they won when they made the fire real hot for you. But I want to tell you something. Listen to the Word of God. He will take your persecutors and he will make them bow down before Him. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. He will take those who persecute you and make them to bow down before Him. Amen. He is God. Nebuchadnezzar came to the mouth of, of the fiery furnace and he spoke and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they came forth out of the fire of the Bible says, and the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men whose body had no fire upon them. Praise God. Amen. Whose hair on their head was not singed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is that a testimony or what? I'm telling you, it killed the men that threw them in, but not one hair on their head was singed. Neither were their coats changed, though the smell of the fire had even passed upon them. Verse number 28 says, The Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants and trusted in him, and has changed the king's word and yielded their body that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. And then Nebuchadnezzar begins to make a degree and as he makes a degree he said no one will speak amiss against God. Amen. The king then promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Ah, oh, praise God. Are you feeling what I'm feeling this morning? Sometimes we don't see the end of the story when we're tempted to bow. Sometimes we don't see the end of the story when the heat is turned on. Sometimes it's just faith that we have to walk by saying, listen God, I will not bow. I won't bow to criticism. I will not bow to temptation. Uh, but God, they're heating the fire hotter. Folks, God, make it hot for others sometimes. Anyone ever, you don't have to raise your hand, but anyone ever had the furnace made hot for you? 
just because you're serving God and they put the pressure on and they put the heat on because they want to see you bow. The enemy is using them to see you bow. Sometimes, you know, if we're not careful, you, 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 can, you can watch things on, on television or, or, or the internet or you can listen to things through the radio. You can hear things, uh, she sees things in the newspaper and they put the pressure on you. And you may say, I feel like I'm the minority. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you are. But don't bow. Because you have a God who's great. Just because others have bowed, amen, doesn't negate the power and the authority of the God. I will not bow. You see, I'll tell you something. You'll never win your family. You'll never win your friends if you bow. You'll never win your classmates. You'll never win your community. You'll never win in a relationship if you have bowed. But at the end of the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wins the heart of the kingdom because they would not bow. God, I want to win the heart of the world. I want them to see you in me. There are times in our life where we'll go through difficult times and folks will say, but you're still trusting God. But at the end of the story, they see how the hand of God has moved. You see, the king became a believer in God. The God that cannot fail because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we will not bow. Oh, God did an amazing thing. I will not bow. I won't change what I believe because they don't like it. I won't change my holiness because they don't like it. I won't listen to ungodly music and I won't watch ungodly things just because someone doesn't like it. Amen. I will not bow. Amen. I won't allow anyone to steal my purity and become ugly before God, but I'll remain true and pure before God. I will not bow. Amen. The Word of God says in, in, in 2 Corinthians 3, 2, we are epistles written in our hearts known and read of men. Yeah. Do you understand? Some folks may never break open the Word of God. All they're being influenced by is by their fleshly desires, by their lust. They're influenced by the world around about them. Amen. But you are the Bible that they read. You are the one that when you say, I will not bow, they look at you and they see God. They read God in everything that you do. In every moment that you stand taller. In every time that you force your knees not to bend. In every moment that your heart says, I will not bow. And your mind says, I have a made up mind. You are a written epistle that is read of men because you will not bow. Yeah. Listen. None of us are strangers to the enemy wanting you to bow. None of us. But God's message is do not bow. God is looking for people to join the crowd that will say, I will not bow. I will not change. 